Hi, my name is Lavender, and I'm with the group Pro Bono ASL. I'm here with my friends Eduardo from Deaf Latinas y Familias and Neil, also from Pro Bono ASL. Today, the three of us would like to take you on a tour of the world-famous Dinosaur Hall in the Natural History Museum located in Los Angeles, California. Let's get started! Welcome to the Dinosaur Hall. In this gallery, you can travel more than 66 million years into the past to explore the Mesozoic era, also known as the Age of the Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are ancient reptiles, which all have similar hip structures that held their legs directly underneath the body. similar to the way our legs are positioned beneath us. Our museum's paleontologists, or scientists who study the ancient past, analyze fossils and compare them to life around us today in order to understand Earth's mysterious history. Through studying dinosaur remains, we can imagine what their world was like, what they were like in life, and finally, what happened to their lineage. You can think of the Natural History Museum like a library, where physical objects, like dinosaur bones, are stored for further research. Throughout our hall, you will see a variety of fossils and mounted skeletons, many of which contain real fossils from our collection. Take a close look at the mounted skeleton in front of you you may notice the metal frame hugging some of the bones. While this secures the fossils in place, the fossils can also be removed, allowing our paleontologists to study this delicate material for years to come. You can find videos throughout the hall of scientists collecting and studying the fossils you see in the hall. You can also visit our Dino Lab on the second floor of the museum to watch real paleontologists preparing fossils for the collection. You may even be one of the first people to see these ancient clues revealed all thanks to the work of our paleontologists. In front of you is a small sample of the diverse fossil collection from our Natural History Museum. Take a close look at this wall. What types of fossils do you see? All of these specimens are real fossils, but as you can see, they are not all bones. A fossil is simply any evidence of life from the ancient past. This can include footprints, skin impressions, 
and fossilized feces, all of which can be found on this wall. By piecing together these clues, we can learn more about dinosaurs and the fascinating world in which they lived. What you see here are fossils from the Mesozoic era, between 66 million and 250 million years ago. At this age, one of the few ways to preserve ancient clues was through a process in which mineral-rich water reaches buried remains and begins to replace the original material or fills in holes where that material once lay. Fossils come in all shapes and sizes, just like dinosaurs. The largest dinosaur in the room, Mementiosaurus, is a medium-sized sauropod, or long-necked dinosaur from China. Between its feet of this colossal animal, you will find models of the smallest dinosaur found in North America, named Frutidens. Although these creatures are quite different, their fossils both show similar structures that all dinosaurs share. We may never find all the dinosaurs in the world, but the clues we do find help us bring these incredible creatures to life. Dinosaur fossils make up just some of the fossil material found from the Mesozoic era. Other specimens like fossils from plants and other animals help us better understand other aspects of the world of the dinosaurs. As dinosaurs ruled the land, marine reptiles like this ruled the seas. Our specimen you see on the wall is a plesiosaur known as Polycatylus that swam the ancient seas of Kansas. This particular fossil gives us insight into the growth of baby marine reptiles. Take a look at the jumble of bones in its midsection. These bones are not digested or chewed up, so we know it wasn't this animal's meal. They are also identical to the bones of the larger animal. This evidence tells our museum scientists that these are the bones of the plesiosaur's unborn baby. Polycatylus showed scientists that plesiosaurs gave live birth to one large baby, very similar to many mammals. Perhaps these large marine reptiles lived in groups, caring for their young, similar to modern marine mammals like dolphins and whales today.
This remarkable fossil find paints a much more vivid world of the ancient past, a world which was much more dynamic than just dinosaurs. Our museum has a team of fossil hunters who go out into the field to make new discoveries about dinosaurs. By continuing to discover new fossils, we are better able to refine our understanding of dinosaurs and their prehistoric environments. On the floor, we have a set of backbones from a large sauropod, one of the long-necked dinosaurs. These fossils were excavated out of the rocks of the Utah desert, and they date back to the late Jurassic period, about 150 million years ago. In the field, fossil hunters start by prospecting, searching for fossils in wide open badlands looking closely for any signs of new fossils sticking out of the rock. We know that dinosaurs roamed the entire planet, but the remains are only preserved in specific rocks, such as those found in the Midwest United States. Once a fossil is discovered, the work of a paleontologist begins. This video was taken at one of our quarries in southern Utah during the height of a summer, a harsh environment that requires hard work and determination. As you can see, Fossil collectors use a variety of tools to dig up dinosaurs. What sort of tools do you see? You can see the clinking of hammers hitting chisels to chip away at the rock. And you can see how the paleontologists carefully drip glue onto the fossils to keep them stable. Once the edges of the fossil have been defined, our paleontologists secure it in a protective plaster jacket. The white part surrounding the fossil so that it can travel safely back to the museum. Visit our Dino Lab on Level 2, where you can observe fossil preparators working on some of these recently discovered specimens. Tyrannosaurus rex is arguably one of the most famous dinosaurs. Our museum is one of the few places in the world where you can see a growth series for T-Rex. In front of you are three examples of Tyrannosaurus specimens representing different ages and sizes. We're able to tell the age through rings of growth seen in the bones, much like tree rings. The smallest individual was a two-year-old Tyrannosaurus. This small, long-legged dinosaur would have to run down small, quick prey. At this age, a Tyrannosaurus would begin gaining five pounds a day on average.
The next biggest individual was a 14-year-old Tyrannosaurus. These were the awkward years for the king of the dinosaurs. Many animals, dinosaurs included, don't grow body parts at the same rate. This growth makes them look a little disproportionate. It's because of this that some scientists thought this specimen was a separate species from Tyrannosaurus, known as Nanotyrannus. Our scientists now know that this isn't a separate species, rather, a rex in its teen years. The largest individual known as Thomas was a 17-year-old Tyrannosaurus. Thomas was found to be 70% complete, making it one of the world's most complete dinosaurs discovered. Fossil evidence tells us that Thomas was still growing This enormous predator was a subadult, not even fully grown yet. Our trio helps us better understand the growth of one of the ancient top predators, and a glimpse into the life of one of the most famous beasts that have ever lived. To learn more about T. rex growth, visit the mezzanine level of the Dinosaur Hall. Dinosaurs ruled the planet for close to 160 million years. However, 66 million years ago, more than half the life on Earth vanished. Looking around this hall, most of the animals you see went extinct. Clues suggest a meteor impact, volcanic activity, and climate change may have played a role in the extinction of these giant reptiles. However, not all dinosaurs vanish during this mass extinction. You may even see dinosaurs alive today. By studying the ancient past using our fossil collections, we can better understand the natural world. Take a close look at the Velociraptor skeleton and compare it to the skeleton next to it. What similarities do you see? Scientists have found many features in the skeletons of dinosaurs that can only be found in one living animal today. Birds. You may see that Velociraptor has hooks extending from the rib bones. Also, in front of the ribs are large breastplates connected by a thin bone. Underneath the Velociraptor skeleton, you will find a hollow fossil bone, three toed footprints, and finally, behind this exhibit, you can find a fossil showing preserved feathers.
all of these features helped one group of dinosaurs take to the sky. Birds are the only members of the dinosaur family tree that survives to this day. If you step outside, you can see hummingbirds and finches, crows and hawks, all of which are living dinosaurs. Although we see a great diversity of birds all over the world, the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs like T-Rex and Triceratops allowed a new type of animal to grow and succeed. Some small mammals from the Mesozoic era survived the mass extinction 66 million years ago and thrived in the absence of dinosaurs to display the great diversity we see today. This includes us, humans. With our unique abilities, mainly our incredible intellect, we can look into the ancient past to help us better understand the present and to shape our future. The large dinosaurs of the past may be extinct, but thanks to their incredible fossils and the scientists who study them, we can imagine what they were like in life and reconstruct their ancient world. <laughs>